Hello, welcome to Gemma Watson Art. In this video I'm going to show you how I created my Scarborough Cliff Bridge painting from start to finish. The painting is of Scarborough Cliff Bridge, also known as Scarborough Spa Bridge. I wanted to do a painting that was from lots of different angles, so I wanted to do a panoramic view. So I started taking several photographs and I stitched them together. Uh, but of course what happens when you do this is you end up with a bit of a Frankenstein patchwork. Uh, things don't quite match up because you've taken photographs from different angles. So by doing a, a painting of this I can correct all that. So I use the perspective guides in the software I'm using Color Painter 2021. Um, and I also use a grid to grid up the photograph onto the canvas. And as I go along, I do change things to make the um, to make the photographs that don't quite match up properly work. So I might change the angle slightly, or use a different photograph, or change the perspective uh, to make it work. Uh, this part of the drawing was an example of that, where I decided to extend the canvas to make a more spacious foreground and to add trees to the right of the composition. Another change I made to my drawing was I wanted the sky to follow the perspective more so I wanted a sense of vastness that drew the audience into the space so I made it so that there was more clouds and they got smaller uh, the closer they got to the vanishing point. Once I was happy with the first initial drawing, I then rework it and draw over the top and neaten everything up and make it more precise. Once the final drawing is complete, I then begin the painting. I'm using the Mixer palette in Power Painter. Um, I prefer to still mix the colours uh, just as I would do if I was doing my acrylic paintings because it's something I've always enjoyed doing. It's part, for me, it's part of the painting process, so I still like to mix the colours and choose my colours that way. I usually use the blocky background brush to do my skies and then use other brushes on top of that. You can see my brushes um, at the bottom there on the left hand side. And then to the right there, I've just put a little pop-up screen of all the different brushes that I use throughout the painting. So I leave the sky for now and I start blocking in colour as an underpainting and then I'll start doing the details on top of that. Okay, so that's all the blocking in done and now it's time to start working on the details. Okay, so I start blending colours at the moment to create a background for these pillars on the bridge um, to put the brickwork on top of, using brushes like the horse blend tool. I then use brushes like the horse tail brush and the old clumpy brush um, to do the brickwork and bring some texture into the image. I then bring the perspective guides back in to help me make sure that the, um, the lines of the brickwork are in the right place and I begin to bring the detail in of the bricks. I then carry on using the old clumpy brush to bring in texture to the painting um, on the rest of the bridge. Uh, I use it to bring texture onto the grass and pavements. At this point I start adding a bit of texture of the blades of grass using the wispy blend brush and the wet bristle brush. Um, I work this up to a certain point and then I leave it um, and I go back to using the old clumpy brush on the trees and get an overall sense of what the painting feels like uh, with this, all this texture added. And then when that's done I then begin to start doing more detailed work. Okay, so I really start working on the fine details now, reworking areas, uh, still using the old clumpy brush. Um, however, I was in danger of overusing that brush and it was sort of a, kind of having a more pastel quality to it and I was losing the defined bold brush strokes. So 
So I decided to use a smear paintbrush to bring back some more solid colour. Although I want my paintings to have a really stick quality to them, I also like to really see uh, painterly brush strokes up close. So I try to sort of keep it loose when I'm working closely. And then when I zoom out and see it as a whole, I like it to look more defined and real. So there's sort of a fine balance between keeping that realism and but also keeping an expressive quality to it. So I leave that part of the painting um, and I go on to paint other things and then I return to them parts later if need be. Okay, so for the rest of the video I shall leave you some time-lapse footage. It's very much the same techniques that I've used already that I've discussed um, that are repeated in different areas of the painting. So I hope you enjoy this video to the end to see the finished results and if you enjoyed it please hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe and hope to see you again. Thank you.